Hey learners, welcome back to our data structure series. Today we are diving into dictionaries, a super handy way to store and manage the data. So what exactly is a dictionary in data structure? Simply put, it's a way to store data as a key where value pairs. Each key is unique and connects to a specific value, kind of like student name associated with the test score. Imagine we have something like this, results equals to a student name and marks. Here each student name is a unique key linked to a specific score. Now with dictionaries, we can perform some powerful operations. Add a new key value pair. Update a value for an existing key. Delete a pair if we no, no longer need it. And even search for value using a key. What makes dictionary so efficient is their quick lookups and ease of manipulation using these key based indexes. So get ready as we explore dictionaries in depth covering how to use them efficiently and why they are so important in data management. Let's get started. In this segment, let's talk about how a dictionary can be represented as a linear list. Essentially, this means we are organizing our dictionary as a simple collection of key value pairs. There are two main ways to represent this linear list, sorted array and sorted chain. Sorted array. Here we use an array data structure to implement our dictionary. Keys and values are stored in a specific sorted order, making it efficient for searching, but potentially slower when we need to insert or delete elements. Coming to the sorted chain, this method uses a linked list to implement the dictionary. Keys and values are linked in a sorted order, allowing flexibility with insertions and deletions, but making searches a bit slower. Each approach has its own strengths and weakness, depending on what type of operations you need most often. Let's dive deeper into how these methods work and see where each one shines. Now let's focus on sorted array method for representing a dictionary. In this approach, an array is used to store our list of elements, each element being a key value pair from the dictionary. And with this array setup, these are three main operations we can perform. First one is search, second one is insertion and third one is deletion. Search we can look up a specific way to quickly retrieve its value. Thanks to the sorted order of elements. Insertion. Adding a new key value pair to the array. This keeps the list in order. Though it may involve shifting elements to maintain that sorted sequence. Finally, deletion. Removing a key value pair from the array. Similar to insertion. It may require shifting other elements to keep everything in order. The sorted array is efficient for searching. But insertions and deletions can be a bit slower since elements need to be rearranged. Let's take a closer look at each operation in the sorted array approach for a dictionary. First search. To search for a key value pair, we use the binary search method. Since the array is sorted, binary search is fast and efficient, giving us a time complexity of big, big O of log n for a dictionary with n pairs. Next, insertion. When we add a new key value pair, we first ensure there is no existing key that matches. The total time taken to insert involves time for searching, that is, to find if the key already exists, plus time for inserting, that is, placing it in the sorted position. This adds up to big O of log n for the search and big O of n for insertion, resulting in Big O of log n plus n overall. Finally, deletion. For deletion, we first locate a key value pair using binary search. Once we found it's removed and elements are shifted to maintain order, the total time required is time for searching plus time for deletion, which also comes out to big O of log n plus big O of n. So while sorted arrays make searching fast, Insertion and deletion can be more time consuming due to shifting elements. Now look at the sorted chain method for representing a dictionary. In this approach, each node in a linked list represents a key value pair from the dictionary. Each node has three fields. One field for the key, 
a second field for the value associated with that key and third field as a pointer to the next node in the chain. With this sorted chain setup, we can perform the following operations. Search, we can traverse the list to find a specific key value pair. And next is insertion, adding a new key value pair while keeping the list sorted, typically by finding the correct spot in the chain. And third one is deletion, removing a key value pair from the list which may involve adjusting pointers to keep the chain linked. The sorted chain provides more flexibility for insertion and deletion elements, but searching may be slower compared to a sorted array. Let's break down how the main operations work in sorted chain representation for a dictionary. First, search. To find a key value pair, we, we need to traverse the linked list sequentially, going from node to node until we find the key. This makes the search operation slower with a time complexity of big O of n. Next, insertion. When adding a new key value pair, we first search for the correct spot in the sorted chain. Once found, we insert the new node at that position. The combined search and insert steps also have a time complexity of big O of n. Finally, deletion. To delete a key value pair, we start by locating the key in the chain then remove the node, adjusting pointers to keep the chain linked. This process also requires traversal, making the deletion time complexity big O of n. In summary, while sorted chains are flexible for insertion and deletion, each of these operations can take longer time in a sorted array, especially for the larger data sets. Now let's talk about the skip list representation. An advanced and efficient way to store sorted elements. A skip list is a probabilistic data structure that builds on the idea of a linker list, but adds a twist for faster operations. Think of it as a linker list that being upgraded for speed. Each node in a skip list has multiple pointers, allowing it to skip over several elements, which makes a search, insertion and deletion operations more efficient. To understand this better, let's compare with a train system. Imagine a local train that stops at every node. This is similar to basic linker list where you have to go through each element one by one. But a skip list also has an express train option. This express train skips multiple nodes stopping only at certain ones, enabling faster navigation across the list. By using these express lanes, Skip list make it much quicker to reach a target node, keeping the time complexity low even for larger data sets. Let's go over the main operations in a skip list, search, insert and delete. In a skip list, nodes use extra pointers to skip over several elements, which reduces traversal time. These additional pointers make it much faster to reach the desired node. Compared to a regular linker list where we have to go node by node, the time complexity for all these operations, whether it's searching, insertion or deletion, it's big O of log n. This makes skip list far more efficient than traditional linker list, especially as list grows. Skip list strike a great balance between simplicity and efficiency, providing an alternative to binary search trees and balanced trees for quick operations. They are particularly useful when you need fast search and update times without the complexity of tree searches. Now let's dive into the operations of a skip list, focusing on search, insertion and deletion. Search operation in a skip list. The purpose of this is, the goal is to locate a specific node in the skip list. The method we use is, we traverse the list from the top layer down to the bottom, skipping over the nodes for faster navigation. The approach we use is, here how it works, starting at the top level. If the successor node is less than or equal to the search key, we move to that successor. If the successor is greater, we simply drop down one level. By repeating this process, we efficiently zero in on the target element either finding it or confirming it's absent. The outcome is this layered approach lets us skip over large sections of nodes 
making the search faster than in a traditional linked list coming to the efficiency the average time complexity for a search in a skip list is big o of log n making it highly efficient for large data sets let's go through a quick example to see how a skip list search works in action imagine we are searching for element 17 in our skip list at level 1 we start at the top the successor here is 12 and since 12 less than or equal to 17 we move to this successor at 12 we reach the end so we give down to level 2 at 12 level 2 the successor of 12 here is 19 but 19 greater than 17 so we drop down again to level 3 at 12 in level 3 this time the successor of 12 is 15 and since 15 less than or equal to 17 we move to 15 still in level 3 the next successor is 19 and since 19 greater than 17 we go down one more level to level 4 at 15 finally the successor of 15 is 17 which matches our search key 17 is found this layered approach shows how skip list can efficiently locate elements by skipping over sections making it much faster than a regular linked list now coming to the insertion process in a skip list first we need to search for the right spot in a skip list it's like finding the perfect place on a book shelf the key here is that we want to maintain the sorted order of all the elements now the cool part the average time it takes to insert a new key in a skip list is just big big go of log n this means it's pretty efficient especially when compared to other data structures so if we have n elements in the bottom layer our insertion process remains speedy let's keep it simple look at the right position insert the key and keep that sorted order intact easy right now we will explore how to delete an element from a skip list first off we need to locate the element we want to remove Once we find it we will delete it from all the layers where it shows up this ensures that our skip list stays clean and organized just like with insertion we want to maintain the sorted order of the elements even after a deletion and here is a fun fact the average time complexity for deletion in a skip list is big go of log n that's right if we have n elements in the bottom layer this operation is still quite efficient so remember find the element remove it from all layers and keep everything in order and that wraps our journey through dictionaries and skip list we have covered everything from insertion deletion and searching i hope you found these concepts clear and helpful if you enjoy this series and want to dive deeper into data structures make sure to hit that like button subscribe and share this with your friends Your support really helps me to create more content for you. In the next video, we will dive more into the second unit and explore more exciting topics. So stay tuned. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. I will see you all in my next video.